Melissa Peterson with the Iowa State Education Association. We are registered uh, against, uh, strongly against this proposed legislation. Um, I, I struggle with the title uh, of this piece of legislation uh, that's being proposed, the Iowa Student Opportunity Act. I believe that we have a strong history here in the state of Iowa of making sure that we fulfill our responsibility to the many not just the few. And I think we have done that very well uh, through our public education system that serves more than 480,000 students across the state, regardless of what their county demographic might look like. Um, for those that think that we might not have options, please know that our public educators go out of their way to understand that one size does not fit all. And legislators understand that one size does not fit all, which is why, under current code, we have access to quality public schools, we have access to public charter schools, we have access to magnet schools, we have access to concurrent enrollment programs, right, that provide us with lots of different flexibility and options under our existing public school structure. For those families, approximately 34,000 students who choose to opt out of that public school program, as a state, we also subsidize that non-public education to the tune of approximately $44 million currently. <laughs> Right? So I would argue we provide plenty of options for those folks who decide to choose things that are not in the public school track. Um, I think it's very important for us to understand that if we were able to come up with additional resources, which, by the way, this legislative session I have repeatedly been told are very, very scarce. You all took action last night to pass a deappropriation bill for our existing fiscal year to the tune of $35 million, right? So I did not realize there were apparently additional dollars to be able to be spent on creating a tandem system that would be subsidized by taxpayer dollars. If we are able to find such resources, I would strongly advocate that those resources be designated to benefit the nearly half million public school students as opposed to the approximately 34,000 current non-public students. Now, I appreciate this bill does not apply to those that are currently enrolled in a private school. However, we have an estimate of approximately $15 million in the first year just to gear up. I believe. There hasn't been a fiscal note uh, requested on this, but it is somewhat similar to the original piece of legislation, Senate File 2091, that you had proposed at the beginning of the legislative session. Uh, so, so we can quibble over how much it would be until we have an official fiscal note, but if we're paying for every new potentially kindergartner who enters the system to have this $4,000 per pupil funding amount for them, and then anyone who was not previously enrolled in the prior two semesters in a non-public school, this could have a price tag upwards of 10 million dollars. To get into the logistical questions that I have related to the bill that I was hoping I might be able to get answered today, um, I'm concerned about the cost of the Department of Management contracting with a private vendor to manage the program. I also have questions as to whether or not students who would be eligible for the $4,000 voucher, if they'd also be eligible to rece receive the school tuition organization grants that currently exist in our state code. I also then would ask what would be the potential expense if, as has been proposed in the Republican tax reform proposal here in the Senate, we couple with the federal government's tax reform proposal to expand our current 529 college savings program to apply to K-12 non-public education. There was an estimate from our treasurer's office before this piece of legislation was proposed that just that coupling with the 529 program would cost our state five to eight million dollars in revenue. When we take that into consideration, with the potential tens of millions of dollars that the $4,000 per pupil would apply to, and then, by the way, there also was a proposal in the Republican tax reform legislation that the Senate has moved forward um, that would increase that STO cap, by the way, for a million dollars. It also would increase the eligibility to receive one of those grants from 300% of the federal poverty rate to 400% of the federal poverty rate, which, by the way, would mean that a family of four making $96,000 a year would qualify for one of these grants and potentially also qualify for the $4,000 voucher. That is an incredible expense. If we have the resources to move forward with something like this, please consider, instead of investing in a very small pool of people, by the way, many of these individuals, we approximate about one-fifth of our existing, not, or excuse me, our existing public school population, by the way, would not directly benefit from this voucher plan because they don't have non-public schools in their counties. 
right? So this isn't about access for all. If you want to protect access for all, I believe we should make additional investments in the public education system. And if for some reason none of those reasons are compelling to you, please also consider the lack of accountability and transparency that I believe exists in our non-public school system. We have some quality institutions. However, they do not have to accept all students as public schools do. Additionally, they do not have locally democratically elected boards that monitor their expenditure of resources. For all of these reasons, I sincerely hope that you are able to find it within yourselves to truly look out for access and student opportunity for all students. Thank you.